actually it's actually live this time. Let me double check. So did I accidentally do it on listed? All right. Again, here we are. I was having a hard time grabbing the appropriate stream link. So I think I should be coming in this time. So anyway, we got all the super chats. We're good to go. Let's get the show on the road. Thank you all for your patience. Uh, I do not deserve the this audience. Let's be straight. So I'm very thankful to uh, have you all here and being so, uh, well, merciful with me. So let's get down to it. So Lauren Hill, I'm going to fire it up. And I'm just going to verify that you guys can actually see me as well. So, you guys, you guys able to see me? For some reason it says stream is offline. Weird. Um, there we go. No, 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 we can't see you. <laughs> Lol. Okay. Okay, so it says I'm live. Okay. All right, I'm going to restart it then. Or am I going to restart it? Can you see me yet? No. Oh, you can see me. No. There we go. Apparently, YouTube's system has to, like, unscrew up everything. There we go. And I just had to be patient. Well, because that's what happens when you're an FESI user, right? You kind of just like, oh, YouTube's going to be like, oh, yeah, it's working. Everything's working. And it's like, not really sure it's working. But hopefully, uh, hopefully it'll stay that way. You know what I'm saying? So, yay, about time. Wahoo. <laughs> so here, let me just restart the stream five times and hope for the best, right? I mean, that, that's really going to give us the result, right? Mm, no, that's the problem. Like, you know, because like I'm movement, right? But then again, a control type would probably just be more willing to wait. Or they turn into an enormous giant green rage monster and throw their tables around. Who knows? But I'm not going to demonstrate here. Not doing that. So, yeah, I did have a rough time. And it's embarrassing, Lev, because, like, it was a radio button, apparently, that I had no idea I had to press. So, but awesome. The stream is back. Thank you all for your patience. Let's get the show on the road, finally. And, by the way, got a bunch of super chats. Probably just, uh, we're just gonna, we're gonna go through them. And, uh, if that means I gotta stay later, that means I gotta stay later. I'm gonna honor this audience. Thank you all for everything that you've done, uh, in this case. So, uh, all right. And if you guys have any other sound or echoing issues, let me know. Let's get down to this. We're doing Lauren Hill, firing it up. And um, sometimes success can do that. Sometimes it, it really uh, illuminates, you know, creative differences, spiritual differences, you know, um, emotional differences. And I, you know, just like a, a, a young person would think that, you know, the friends that you, my fifth grade friends are going to be my friends forever, you know, throughout high school, throughout and it's not that they cease being your friends, but sometimes you just mature to a place and some people get there faster, some people don't, you know. And, and you know, hope, hopefully, ultimately, everyone catches up. But, um, you know, I, uh, it, it, it's really interesting because I didn't actually make a decision to be solo. It really just happened. I, I promise you that it's hard to explain, but, you know, I had intended to be in the group forever until I found myself in, in circumstances where 
I felt the, the inner desire to express myself freely and openly without any constraint, you know, without anybody saying, hey, that's, you can't say that. That's not, that's not fly. You can't say that. People won't, you know what I mean? So, you know, the only way I could have done that was in doing a solo release. Well, the good part about it is I think that God, you know, surrounded me with the right team, you know, with the you know, I think the good thing about it is that God surrounded me with the right team because I just keep talking about myself and, and my own past without like actually talking about other people as much in my past. So I'm just going to have to put down a point for introverted sensing. So that's what I'm going to do. Go to Lauren Hill, S-I-N-E, talk about faith like that for sure. Definitely going for it. So the team that I needed to help me exercise all of my ideas, you know. It's like, you know, I, you, you, need, you need that. You need that army, you need that force, you know what I mean? No, no man is an island, you know, so I... No man is an island. Count another point towards interdependence. That's great. Affiliative AF, affiliative, nice. Refuse to, to take all the praise you know, for that, because they were talented musicians, you know, they were talented engineers, they were talented production assistants, who really, really, you know, were there, who really were there, and if I had an idea, I was able to express it, and, you know, made them stay and work diligently till it was expressed, and, you know, that, that I appreciate, I appreciate the fact that if there's a will, there's a way. You know, miseducation, um, you know, it, um, wow, it, it, every day it means something more <laughs> to me, actually. Um, people automatically thought. You know, something more to me, people automatically thought. It kind of seems like S-I, -S maybe F-I, but she hasn't really, she hasn't really been talking about her, like, own self-aggrandizement. Let me put another point for S-I still. Still talking about, like, in that affiliative way. Um... Kind of seems responding, but not sure. Right, let's switch over to a different uh, interview also. I think the most important thing that we can do is, is uh, really have faith with respect to building our own outlets. You know, we've got media and uh, well, technology, ways of technology to really become as independent as we possibly can. You know, sort of stop depending upon um, external outlets, but really spending a lot of our time developing our own outlets. I mean, it was a time pre-segregation when the black community had to do things independently. That's very affiliative. Pre-segregation -seg of the black community has to be doing things in that regard. Very affiliative for sure. Um, and uh, I don't think she's very systematic. Might be might be a little interest-based here. This, this could be an NF we're dealing with folks. Um, but uh, let's keep going. Need more information. And, and, and there was so much progression. There was so much talent. There were so many skill sets or skillful uh, people, skilled craftsmen and artisans in that community because they were forced to be. See, I happen to believe that when people, you know, it's very easy for people to become insecure when they have a place. And, and they start to look at new town as something threatening. Ooh, that's very T-I-F-E, talking about other people's places in that regard, being very supportive in that direction. That's very T-I-F-E. That's, uh, let's keep going. And I think that what you have to do is you have to create a platform that alleviates that tension so people can make more opportunity for other people. Because it's, so that instead of looking, instead of... So people can make more opportunity for other people. You have to do that. that was that an S-E-N-I statement I heard? Interesting. Let's keep going. The, the marketplace being a place of competitiveness, it should be a place of proper integration where everybody has a space. But if you feel like this cat may take over my lane or what, you know, if I let this guy get on and what's going to happen to me, if that energy is allowed to, to, to be around, then, you, yeah, a lot of folks are not going to be able to make their way in because some of, some of them will always be blocking, you know, um, their thoughts on, their thoughts being, you know, um, some sort of self-preservation, you know, we got to survive. And therefore, you know, if you let this, these new kids with all this new talent, then maybe people won't really listen to me anymore. She kind of seems like she might be cognitive transitioning in this particular 
one. Let's find another one. Let's find another interview. Um, try this one. Last night was uh, not only the first um, the first tour date, but it was the first time um, that I, as a solo performer, really got to perform, you know, in front of an audience that wasn't like, you know, personal people, people that we know, people at the record company. So it was really, you know, it was really a, a, a big thing for me, you know. Um, there was a lot of excitement, a little bit of nervous energy, but we all, you know, we knew it was going to go well because, uh, you know, we were so well received um, by the Japanese audience. And plus, you know, we we had a lot of love, and, and I think that um, the audience could tell, you know, the sincerity of what it was that we were trying to put across. So we were real excited. <laughs> it was, did you feel more... That was pretty informative. I'm putting a thing down for informative. I don't know. It's like I keep going back between informed initiating movement, informed responding control. We got some cognitive transitioning going on. She's pretty well integrated. I, I like this one, guys. This is actually one, this one's actually a more complicated one. So thank you for starting me off complicated tonight. I uh, I like people who are more balanced. You know, it's especially why it's difficult for me to uh, at times like type people who are much older. Uh, because they're more balanced with their cognitive integration, so. Comfortable playing the show last night or tonight? Oh, well, you know, always when you have a new show, you're sort of working out the kinks and, and you know, and trying to perfect um, what is brand new. But, I mean, both nights were wonderful, you know what I mean? We had, like, this wonderful... Um, it's all about what you got to do. We had this, we had that. That's uh, two SE statements, which is pretty awesome. Uh, let's keep going audience energetic crowd people just gave us a lot of love you know um you know tonight you know when you have such a major production a big production there's always some little technical something but you know you just you know keep singing people gave us a lot of love there's always this technical thing but we just kept on going anyway that's a t-i-f-e s-e and i statement and keep smiling and keep shining and keep trying to give the people love and you did shine tonight thank you very much <laughs> thank you i was sweating a lot yeah <laughs> That's why I have my towel, my trusty, you know. That's why I have my towel, my trusty towel, because I was, I was, I was sweating a lot because I'm an SENI user. You know, I don't want to, like, come off, you know, having all this sweat all over my face. I got to make sure I got my towel, you know what I'm saying? Because to keep the sweat off my face, because that would be, like, really bad, right? If it was just, like, dripping everywhere. And then all of a sudden, like, maybe, like, you'd, like, start, you know, losing respect for me and shit because it's like, oh... You know, I'm sweating all over, so I guess that means you're just not going to be willing to listen to me anymore because I'm a TI user, and I need to, like, have as many people listen to me as much as possible, right? Right? Right, guys? Right? Because, like, T-I-F-E, right? Okay. Who knows? My little dab thing there. <laughs> uh, when I hear your music, Superstar, mm. it sound, it sound overlaps let my fire mm -hmm. from doors. Mm -hmm. On, uh, putting using a harpsichord that's when i realized wow this reminds me you know of that doors tune and, and the hook influence in my life that reminds me of that doors tune. okay that's another se statement as well um definitely ti uh fe gonna go in the movement direction honestly she keeps answering the interview within the context of what's happening so i'm gonna have to put a point for responding and i'm seeing a lot of direct direct responding movement for this one folks let's go back to another one of her uh interviews to look at it more of a direct responding movement point. So you need some people who have um, conquered that demon, you know what I'm saying, and, and mastered that, that scheme. You need people who have conquered that demon because I'm really affiliative and I'm a little abstract, let's be straight, you know, because with, I'm talking about these abstract concepts of conquering that demon, etc. While staying direct, she's taking control. She's telling other people what they should do because she's an SE user. So she's definitely STP and FJ Quadra, for sure. Definitely STP and FJ Quadra. Also, look at her visuals. The way she's wearing the hat in that regard, how her hair is done, doing all the ruffles thing. That's very expert sensing in terms of like how people dress, sometimes expert sensing, especially it's more of a lower expert sensing, like an SE child or like an SE inferior kind of a physical look with how they make those dress choices. Uh, they're really sacrificing the practicality for a more visual aesthetic as a result in terms of expert sensing. So kind of uh, getting some INFJ vibes here. And uh, she's constantly talking about what other people are getting out of the situation. You know, oh, we just got to give the people the love. You know, we're making a win-win for us. You know, they, we come here, you know, and uh, even though we're having problems, they're still giving us love. So we got to give them love back. It's very interest-based focus is creating a win-win situation, right? So this look, Lauren Hill here is looking like an INFJ, folks. Just be straight. 
life. I grew up around a lot of music. I was really blessed to come from a very musical family, so I was exposed to a lot of different stuff. I mean, like Spanish guitarists who some people, you know, wouldn't even know. People like Gilberto and, and you know, uh, Jose Feliciano, some people, you know, just a lot of different music, you know, The Doors, Light My Fire, um, Jose Feliciano's version of Light My Fire. Yeah, she's she's kind of transitioning pretty well. I gotta be straight. She kind of seems like with how preachy she gets, she's like an ENFP focused INFJ. Is is probably what my guess would have to be in this regard. So you know, it was music. I really made a conscious decision to become a music, uh, you know, a performer. I think that I grew up. I was a very dramatic child. You know, it was almost natural for me to become a performer. You know, I didn't. Um, say, you know, one day I think I'm going to become a performer. You know, I, I just love music. I did it from my heart and, you know, and was in love with making music and was in love with the idea of making music. And, um, you know, eventually that led me in the direction of meeting people who wanted me to do it, you know, professionally and encouraged me to do it professionally. And, uh, you know, people wanting me to do music and encouraging me in that direction. It's kind of like an SE inferior standpoint. Cause it's like, I, I want to do this, but are people going to accept it? Because she's constantly talking about acceptance. So as we pop through these interviews, it's it's very consistent. So uh, very interdependent. She's very independent with her approach. Um, so yeah, um, but she still maintains direct. She's actually very movement oriented. She's not talking about outcomes at all, especially when someone's not talking about outcomes or more movement instead of control focus. So direct responding movement. We know she's an STP NFJ Quadra. She's affiliative. So in that regard, she could only be an ENFJ or an INFJ, but she's very responding. She's been responding this entire time. So as a result, Lauren Hill, there you have it, folks, is an INFJ. So there you go, INFJ. Let's move on to the next one. So let's see here. Got clo it's close to ENFJ, but she's just not. She's just not there. It's got that Effie parent there, especially like you know, talking about the Black movement and whatnot. So. Uh, which is not uh, the uh, the appropriate uh, thing here. So I'm gonna scroll down a little bit. Valentina Bolovsky's got Teal Swan. And um, let's see here. And let's also go to, let's check the Discord, make sure we got ourselves uh, the Super Chats appropriately. So October 1st, um, Jordan Spike talking with famous people and then someone added uh, $15 for talking with famous people. So 18 plus 15 is 33 bucks for talking with famous people. And then uh, let's see here. Uh, so we got uh, four bucks added. So it's 29 with Marky Marks, Charles Manson and Paul Rennick. So that means the top uh, bid is talking with famous people. Uh, so yeah, talking with famous people is next. Uh, host Eric is an ENTP, just like Chase, LOL. Let's find out, shall we? And just for host Eric, Mr. Eric Strauss, AKA, talking with famous people. Spend a little bit more time on him as usual. Oh, and uh, all right, so. No, actually, let's see if I hacked it. Let's see if I did this wrong here. Come on, let's verify this. So let's see here. I got, uh, so. So we have Robert Moreland with 10 bucks, right? And then he added five bucks, that's $15, okay, right? So, and then $15 plus $18, right? Means it's the top bid, right? I, am I bad at math or something? You know what I'm saying? Like, I think I got this. Oh, you changed yours to Seth McFarland. Yeah, you did. So, okay. Yeah, you changed it, but still, talking famous people is the top bid right now. Yeah, it's all good, Lev. Just verify your beliefs next time, bro. <laughs> I'm just giving you crap. Don't worry. 
All right, so let's go this. What, what's a, what's a good uh, talking with famous people video you guys you guys like, huh? What, which one? Which one should it be, right? Uh, let's talk. Let's do this. Good old. Good old talking with Say ha. I do not want to uh, watch that one there. Let's actually go home. Maybe it's at the populist videos. I don't know. Say ha. 21st century dating rules. That's a little interesting. Typological responsibility. Eight seconds. That's that's amazing. Um, the most majestic live stream. Wow. Um, okay. And uh, I don't know. Let's do uh, let's do 21st century dating rules according to Eric Strauss. Let's see what he's got to say in that regard. So. Hello, friends, and welcome to Talking with Famous People. My name is host Eric. I'm Hello, the host friends. of Talking I'm, with Famous People. I'm the host of Talking with Famous People. I think that'd be pretty obvious. I mean, isn't that great when people, like, state the obvious? I mean, I do it all the time, right? Hey, it's Chase with csjoseph.life. Okay. <laughs> the television program it tells everybody the news about the truth all the time constantly with all this constant all the time news about truth telling i host eric can get a little tired sometimes that's okay because <laughs> i don't know <laughs> who knows why i begin that way i don't know why it's the first things that came out of my mouth so the topic today is dating rules of the 21st century. Dating rules of the 21st century. And, you know, obviously dating is very different now than it used to be. When I was, when I was young, there was no internet. And so there was a very limited amount of, you know, everybody was sort of playing it by, by ear, word of mouth as to how, how shit went down. Um, I'm just gonna, you know, play it by ear, word of mouth. That's just how shit went down. We're gonna put you down for pragmatic, bro. And we got the nice little rainbow color from Mr. Eric Strauss, specifically for uh, the amazing unicorn that he happens to be. Um, let's get back to it. You know, it's like, I remember having a discussion when I was a teenager about whether a good way to pick up a chick was to see somebody like waiting for a bus or something. A good way to pick up a chick is to see somebody waiting for a bus. Okay. And offer to give them a ride. <laughs> and then offer to give them a ride. Okay. <laughs> Offering to give them a ride. Okay. Yeah, sure. That's very expert feeling, but it's also very expert at sensing. You see someone, you know, waiting for a bus, you offer them a ride. You, you know, you're being nice. So, you know, we're going to get expert feeling, a little, little caring there. You know what I'm saying? Then, you know, hey, you see someone, you know, waiting for a bus, it's got a little bit of expert at sensing. Fair enough, you know. <laughs> um, obviously, the world changed dramatically and for the better, for sure. Obviously, the world trade uh, uh, changed dramatically. Okay, thank you for your very obvious T I F E S E N I statement, sir. Let's skip um, ahead. And I, I would say, S E did sort sure in some context. Like, here's the thing: the most basic kind of N I is. When to throw the spear? You're a hunter. You're se. You're we're waiting for this. You're high. This is a very boring interview. I'm going to like do something else. Um, how about a world of controversy? How about that? Now we're all in the picture pretty good though. Mm -hmm. um, which are generally not as good as my. But this one, I think is. I can't handle the sound. How strong one. the pushback is and how much. I think it's pretty obvious at this point that this guy is super control. 
Like, he is just taking his jolly sweet time to actually say something, right? I mean, but no. I mean, he's obviously the same type as CSJ, right? You know? I mean, I move a lot around in my chair, you know what I'm saying? But this guy, you know, is like, oh, control, right? Oh. I'm sorry, but, like, this guy is, like, so boring to watch. I know certain and enthusiastic, both certain and... Oh my gosh, the quality of that video. I mean, I know the quality of my videos are pretty terrible, but, uh, you know, I'm not, uh, I mean, shoot. Oh, okay, here's, here, he's, he's complaining about being labeled a narcissist. This will be great. He's live streaming about that. He's got to think, we got to think about what he's going to say first. Derek, your host of Talking With Famous People. The YouTube channel made almost entirely out of cheese. YouTube channel made out of yes, cheese. I'm awesome. Okay, so nice little physical uh, component there. Gonna put a little bit more for expert sensing. I'm live streaming again, and uh, really I'm skip for ahead. Your faith, belief in the absence of evidence. If you don't believe in me as a human being in that regard, then you shouldn't be with me. Now it's true. If you then you shouldn't be with me. That's also an extra expert sensing you know looking for people to be loyal to him you do choose to invest your faith in me it's expert sensing is all about trying to find other people who are trying to invest faith in them right another expert sensing standpoint okay it's all about loyalty it's all about faith faith is a form of loyalty that expert sensors seek for introverted sensing it's likely to be repaid an ample bounty and it's also true that at this point since you've been afforded this chance by the slabs if you don't invest your faith in the one person who does deserve your trust after all these years, I'm worried for you. This and the one person who does deserve your trust after all these years, that's actually a very interest point of view because he's aware of like what that other person is getting out of it when providing trust, right? So that's fair enough. He's also stating facts. He's, this guy is not a TE user. And he's pretty direct the entire time. And he is super, super control. So let's keep going. Slabs are, slabs can be wrathful. And it seems to me that this is, they're telling you it's time to trust. Muster whatever trust you got left and throw it at this guy with all your might. Uh, yo, Fate Wind, I gotta say, I ain't fighting this guy. This guy is just trying to throw punches at me and he keeps missing. So, I mean, it's just kind of weird to me. But apparently he's an ENTP. Apparently. Take our chance. Take, we've given you an opportunity. Don't, don't willfully toss it behind you. Make the choice you need to make. Make the choice you need to make. We've given you an opportunity. That's expert sensing. Uh, doing it from a caring standpoint. Still pretty direct. And uh, I gotta say, like, it's pretty concrete there. Has he really made any what-if statements yet? I mean, for an ENTP, right? Supposed ENTP. If she doesn't, I can't obviously be responsible for the outcomes. The slabs... Uh... If she doesn't, I can't obviously be responsible for the outcomes. Wait a minute outcomes this guy's like literally talking about like the word outcomes which is what we say for people or control types and he's still being direct wait a minute so huh interesting how that works I've done my duty according to the slabs and that's all i can do i've been good righteous true just told her the truth been transparent about everything it's important to be transparent too i told her the truth i've been transparent about everything okay yeah that's very ti fair enough very ti you know Okay, I'll give him that. It's not enough that I am true, righteous, just blah, blah, blah. It's important that I tell everybody exactly what's going on. I'm not lying to you again. I'm not, again, I'm not lying, you know? Again. I'm not lying to you again. Again, I'm not lying. It's TI statements after TI statements, right? Saying what I am doing. He's not doing it to you either. It's also expert sensing. This guy is an STP NFJ Quadra, straight up. Again, I'm not hiding shit. Again, I am what you see and what you get. I'm I am what you see and what you get, said every ESTP ever. My goodness. I am what you see and I am what you get. Pretty control, pretty direct, okay? Very concrete. Constantly talking about the what is. 
I am what you see. I am what you get. That's concrete, folks. That's what is. That's not what if. Has he made a what if statement yet? I haven't heard one. Moralist. A righteous man. A, a person who is doing his best to adhere to the will of the slabs. If you can't have faith in me, you can't have faith in anybody. If you can't have faith in me, you can't have faith in anybody. Wow. Extroverted sensing. Wow. If you can't have faith in me, you can't have faith in anybody. Very interest-based. Very nice. Okay. Cool. Cool story, bro. To it, I'd have an additional tool. I could always jettison it later if I wanted to. Ooh, I have an additional tool, Essie. I can always jettison it later if I wanted to, and I, okay. Anyway, I think I've made my point here, guys. Eric Strauss was talking with famous people. He's an ESTP. He's not an ENTP, he's an ESTP, as I've claimed many times previously. So, yes, he thinks he's an ENTP. He also thinks he's an ENTP probably because of his consistent uh, use of... Uh, hallucinogens like you know marijuana etc because it causes a cognitive transition which would make him get closer to his demon function or potentially uh get closer to his ni function so he thinks he's doing it through intuition when in the reality situation he is actually doing it through sensing so be aware of that okay let's see who's next on the list so Oh, Hack CS Joseph ESTJ from Talking with Famous People. Okay, we can do that. Okay. My aunt is my mother's dad. My aunt is there now and she's doing all this stuff. There's so much we can do to help. The best thing we can do for sure, though, is to um, give them the best thing we can do. Oh, look. Oh, look, guys. Expert at sensing. A space where their their sort of ontological dis dis dissolving doesn't get all over everybody else. Right. Like right now, C.S. Joseph's ontological dissolving is getting all over everybody else. And that's. That's part of the problem. That's why we have to, I know he's really content with what he believes. I know, and that's why we need to help him because what he- That's why we need to help Mr. C.S. Joseph. We need to help, T-I-F-E. We're gonna help C.S. Joseph. You know, we're gonna give him an experience in this case, you know, and uh, I'm still gonna be control while I talk about this and I'm still going to be direct. And by the way, he cut that person off in that mid-sentence, so he's still initiating in that regard. Okay, fair enough. Exactly how is this guy being informative? He doesn't understand, and it, he is, how is he going to tolerate? He doesn't understand, and, and, and then he cuts himself off. Oh, look, he is still initiating. Okay, fair enough. The guilt, the shame, the anxiety, the torture, the self-torture he's going to go, put himself through when he realizes, number one. The the self the self torture he's going to be put through with my INFJ subconscious. We need to save Mr. C.S. Joseph from himself because I'm a TIFE user with experted sensing, right? Like, okay, sure, you know. Fine, he's been wrong all this time. Number two, he's been leading everybody astray and giving terrible advice. He's been leading everybody astray. He's been giving terrible advice. He keeps talking about somebody else. He's not talking about himself. That's extroverted sensing. Hmm. Extroverted sensing. He hasn't said any intuitive thing at all. This is another concrete statement. He's out there to, to get people. He's not. He doesn't have other people's best interests in mind. Interest-based. Okay, thank you. Number three, he's been charging $300 an hour to do it. And number four, he's been lying to everybody. He's been lying to everybody. Okay, that's extroverted sensing. Apparently, I'm a liar, folks. I agree. In general, these are symptoms of a disorder called, you know, ontological collapse disorder or something. Okay, 
This is a ontological collapse disorder. That's like very ISTJ shadow of him to say, don't you think? Like, I mean, thank you, Mr. Armchair Psychologist. You know what's really interesting about me versus talking to famous people? Here's a big contrast. I never claim to be a psychiatrist. People ask me about narcissism, borderline personality, a narcissistic uh, personality disorder. And you know what I say? I have no clue. I am not an expert in that. I have no idea. I wonder if Eric Strauss is an expert in those things because I don't go out of my way telling people about disorders and stuff. One, because I don't want to get sued. And two, because it's wrong. I don't know anything about that. So it, it has to do with him being traumatized by bullies young and being an obese child and finally getting that gastro bypass surgery. After he got the surgery, he feels as though he's a new person physically. But ontologically, he still- I didn't know that I had trauma. gastric bypass surgery. I didn't know that. That's news to me. I've never had gastric bypass surgery. That's different. Fair enough. Okay. Yes, but he did not deserve- I did have an appendectomy, though. Does that count? Deserve at all. Remember, that part's definitely not his fault. So how does he deal with it? Instead of processing through the experiences- he projects instead of processing the through the experiences, which the is world, SE and says new CS Joseph had figured out the solution. New CS Joseph didn't figure out any solution. The doctor gave him gastric bypass surgery. CS Joseph is not responsible for new CS Joseph. The doctor. Is. Very concrete as to what he believes what is a kind of ontological dissonance that results in what we see here, which is somebody in a sort of wild years long exercise of self delusion pretending to be an ENP, practice. Does he like sound like an INFJ a little bit, but like it's INFJ subconscious, you know? It's, gotta love this little, co this cognitive transition of his, you know what I'm saying? You're actually seeing one right here. This is an ESTP in INFJ subconscious talking. Practicing and practicing and practicing, trying to act like an ENP more and more and more. Um, and then, you know, becoming increasingly addicted and obsessed with whiteboards, so much so that it's like he has tattoos of whiteboards on his body. He starts saying whiteboard, whiteboard, whiteboard all the time he's walking around. It's, you know, it's tragic. It is not, it is sad. It's sad. And we need to. Well, apparently I have whiteboards tattooed to me. That's pretty interesting. I didn't know that was a thing. That's new. To help. Remember, this live stream is a live stream born of. An exercise remember this live stream is a live stream very concrete i'm going to tell you what is while being initiating and being direct at the same time anyway the point is guys he is an estp i'm not even going to bother going and listening to the spittle and wasting your guys time on this we got other people to type tonight but yeah sorry if you're out there host eric you are an estp and uh i mean uh, I'm not going to label you delusional or anything, but I'm sure you'll be happy to label me delusional. So enjoy yourself, good sir, uh, in that regard. Enjoy very, very much. So, okay. I am going to get the next super chat up right now. So let's look at what we got here. Okay, so a couple of 1999s. And by the way, super chats are closed. I'm just going to get through as many as I can because, like, they're. They're really closed. So, all right. So we got uh, twenty nine dollars currently from Marky Mark, and uh, he wants Seth MacFarlane. And then uh, we got uh, Paul Rennick, um, Fion Davies, and then uh, additional Fion Davies. Well, yeah, it's still not the highest though. Like, let's be straight. Seth MacFarlane's still the highest. So, Seth MacFarlane, it is, folks. Let's move on to the next one. Seth. McFarlane. Awesome. Oh, apparently I'm an ESTJ now, not an ENTJ. And I was on the phone with earlier someone today who told me that I was an ENFP. Are these guys ever going to be consistent in their message? Are my critics actually going to be consistent? See, you know what's really interesting, folks, is that... I actually defended myself today to one of my biggest critics on the phone. God bless him for uh, being willing to call me. And uh, I'll be sorry, I didn't really want to talk to him, but he like talked to me a little bit. And he told me that I was an ENFP. And I was like, okay, that's fair. Thank you for your opinion, sir. But here's the difference. I asked him straight up, am I consistent in my message? Or is it I'm consistently inconsistent with everybody else's message? Which is it? 
because I'd like to think that I'm consistent in the things that I'm saying, but my critics out there are not consistent about what they're saying. So what does that mean? Who's actually like telling the truth? Think about that for a little bit. Think about the consistency of the message, huh? And if you think I'm being inconsistent with my message, put a comment below and let's have a conversation about that. I would be happy to talk about any consistencies that I've, uh, that I've shown or done or said. I've actually come out publicly for two inconsistencies that I had and took full responsibility before this audience for those two inconsistencies. And there's actually a third one that's coming out in the later part of season 17. The first one was actually stated in season 17 in the subconscious episode. And the other one was, was in season 15. You know, how to prevent mistyping. So am I really that bad compared to my critics? I wonder. Let's get down to it. Seth MacFarlane, folks. Kevin Pollack, awesome. Nice. When I was about, uh, about the fifth grade and he had for years collected colonial tools, about 200 years old, and they've been hanging all over the walls of right. our home, he decided he wanted to all right, that's initiating. He actually like changed his sentence like midway through, so mark it down initiating in there as well. Um, so yeah. Okay. Um, the icons look like they're Sharingan eyes. What do you mean, Kenneth Catalan? What do you mean? And, and thank you, Rentero. I, I appreciate that very much. And by the way, guys, we got a lot of super chats. Stop super chatting, please, God Almighty! Stop super chatting. You're making the workload pretty hard, right? So let's just get this going. Basically build a house like they did 200 years ago. So he cleared out all this woodland on his own and built this damn thing. It's like four stories wow. using all Jesus. antique tools. No nails, all wooden pegs. You know, he had an old-fashioned house raising with the guys pulling up the frame. And so Very movement. Very, very movement. And I'm going to have to probably say informed in this case. But uh, let's double check for, uh, for it, it was very. It was as far from, <laughs> you know, any kind of a city upbringing as you can possibly imagine. And how old were you when all this was? Uh, God, I think it was about 12. So this is just an image that stays with you, I would think, for the rest of your life. Yeah, and, yeah. And no getting oh, around it, it, really. <laughs> look, look at all the beverages. My <laughs> God, Kevin, can I get a salad? <laughs> as a matter of fact, you... Wow, that was very expert sensing. Look at all the beverages. My God, can I get a salad? He's also talk about other people's experience, especially in building that house. Um, and he might actually be cognitive transitioning into an informed initiating movement side for ESFP. In reality, he might actually be an INTJ. Ooh, that'd be really cool. Uh, so let's let's watch some more. You can. <laughs> <laughs> we, we actually have a salad for this you. This is just great. Everything yeah. I could possibly need. Yeah, well, you know, <laughs> this is what we call... <laughs> the triple threat or yeah. the trifecta yeah and yeah. Uh, depending on how you want to feel <laughs> actually richter atmosphere if i married somebody who's not my golden pair it's probably because both of us have such a high level handle of this science and uh and based of that we're able to actually have a much better relationship regardless of our lack of compatibilities in various cases because we lack a golden pair entirely and it's just going to show that my marriage is a perfect example, or at least an example, I wouldn't say a perfect example, but an example that any possible relationship could exist. Just one of the prerequisites I would maintain is actually because, hey, if you actually know the science and you both can adhere to it, then as a result, you understand how to meet each other's needs in the context of a marriage, which will make your relationship much more successful, right? It's not about me being inconsistent about my message about golden pairs, which is basically a relationship that's potentially path of least resistant, you know, going downhill where you're both meeting at the bottom because some people, they go like this and they meet together, but some people it's downhill. It's really easy for them. That's a golden pair. Then there's people who have uphill where it's like, you know, where you have like your du a duelist from socioeconomic standpoint, from a relationship standpoint, let's be straight. If you know this science and both of you in the marriage know this science and you know it well, you can have a great relationship outside of your golden pair, okay? So that's actually what's really happening. It's not about inconsistency in terms of the message, but thank you for your point, Mr. Richter Atmosphere. I really appreciate it because it gave me the opportunity to say that because I wanted to say that for a long time. So back to Seth MacFarlane. <laughs> We've got it's all building. here. Yeah. Um, 
uh, well, so from that unbelievably idyllic setting, mm -hmm. um, is there is there a rich sort of um, uh, Gosh, look at look at look at Seth MacFarlane like moving around like that. You know, I gotta love the movement. That guy, that guy cannot sit still. That guy cannot sit still. So let's uh, let's keep going. Comedic sense of humor that runs through the family. Uh, I mean, is it is it um, where does that how does that start? Because for me, when people ask, it's the, nobody in my family was funny, and I mean nobody mm -hmm. until I met a couple of crazy uncles. She may not be as fresh. I haven't got that goes out underneath them and the, right. the timpani whack and you know it's, it's just kind of overplayed yeah. and you know it is what it is but it doesn't really make you laugh and suddenly here was animated slapstick that was you know these characters were being treated like three-dimensional objects mm -hmm. when somebody would fall through a table it played you know it, real almost in real time yeah, yeah yeah it played like like if you like you're watching the gas station scene from uh, Mad Mad World and uh, it, it, it was it was just new and and um, you know, I remember sitting in the in the camera room in college, experimenting with with timing and and you know, having a character hit another character and you know with at, at different speeds and just seeing what was funniest, because I you know there there was no they were the only ones doing that and I was just sort of trying to figure out how did, what what are they doing that's different here and and why is that what are they doing that's different here? Gosh, that's also expert at sensing and uh, doing some experimentation, but it's also more NTP as well. Seth MacFarlane is pretty integrated, so this is another more difficult one, so let's get down to That's it. so damn funny. But now, was that what you just described? Was that actually being taught, or were you sort of researching no. it on your own? I was kind of researching. I mean, the, when the, no one was looking? Uh, basically, yeah, yeah. I mean, what I mean, were you... I was researching on my own. When no one was looking? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's because I'm pragmatic. Seth MacFarlane is pragmatic. That's pretty awesome. He also is seems to be systematic with his approach uh, because uh, he was talking about the system and the process of determining what was funnier and that was the system. He's trying to find the best way to do something, which is a systematic approach. Supposed to be studying. Well, I mean, they, they, what they did at RISD was they taught you every style. They taught you drawn animation, they taught you clay. What they did is they taught you every style. What they did, that's expert sensing. He's talking about his memory in terms of other people. It's not about his own personal memory. Animation, they taught you, you know, cut out animation. And really it was up to you to kind of experiment. And, right. you know, and, and, and most of what was being done in that department was very. And it was really up to you to figure out, you know, what worked because you're trying to experiment. It's very pragmatic, uh, very systematic, determining what works, right? You know, it was very art. So we can already tell that he is an NT because he's pragmatic and systematic. Oriented animation, you know, the kind of yeah. thing that was sort of abstract. And and I, I was just interested in, I mean, I was interested in just making people laugh. So I, I, I was, you know, again, would sit in that room. I was interested in making people laugh. That's actually an S-E-N-I statement. I was interested in, and I, making people laugh, S-E. Room and just by trial and error, try and figure out what it was they were doing that was making that thing. I was trying to figure out what it was that they were doing, okay? So that was SENI, also SENI. Seems being very direct. It's not really so informative. And he is actually kind of responding in uh, the context of what this interviewer is saying. So funny. So you did a little research on your own. Yeah, a little. You were uh, inspired. Yeah. And you went, yeah. I like that. That's That's... Well, see, to me, that those are the turning points in one's sort of creative life, where you're like take to execute all that you're you've learned and. See the guy with the hat. That guy's informative. The damn good friend yeah. of yours. Yeah, who said, yeah. Sure, well, I'll be. That is that the is Asian for sure. Mute that brings your shit on a tray. <laughs> I, I remember him being being terrified of of. He's like my. I remember him being terrified. That's extroverted sensing with memories, guys. It's not introverted sensing. He's extroverted sensing. God, when my parents see this, they're just going to kill me. <laughs> yeah, set his people back 40 years. <laughs> God, when my parents see this, they're just going to kill me. That's also expert sensing. Yeah. I'm surprised he didn't bring his oh, um, all right. So, comedy. So you actually were writing the script thinking this is going to be my, my thesis. Yeah. And uh, All right, so and, and tell me a little bit about the stand-up. Uh, this one. Oh, yeah. Just, there's enough funny all the way through that it... Which that is it, him. Yeah, he's the, yeah. and um, it just it's just hilarious. Everything this guy said was funny. What kind of run-ins like though that. would you have? 
my, you know, I, I still can't do it perfectly. It's but not it's, even it's, pure Bostonian. No, either. no, it's 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 this weird kind of middle sort of thing. And <clears throat> I mean, it's hideous. It's a hideous dialect. It's awful, but it's it's just makes everything funny. Well, it seems to fit Peter kind of perfect <laughs> <laughs> when you say the word hideous. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I I understand the connection. Example of a of a college program working yeah. and actually helping. College program working. That's a TE statement. To get you know get you placed. I mean, they, they, I I didn't know. Trying to get you placed. Uh, he's talking about his difficulties with placement. That's also a systematic approach. That's also TEFI. He's also it's also a pragmatic statement as well because he's kind of fighting against the affiliative system of uh, the education. When he went to Hanna Barbera, I had no contacts and yeah, you probably weren't even. I tried to get on at Hanna Barbera. I had no contacts. That's also a TEFI statement as well. Contacts and having that uh, um, Rolodex. That's a very TE approach. Thinking about your thesis as being a calling card yet. No, it was still no. a thesis. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was still. Can I graduate? That came soon enough afterwards that I. I you know the, the 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 pure value of of learning from the studio that invented it was was helpful because the pure value of learning from the studio that invented it okay that's a tefi statement if i've ever heard okay so fair enough so we already know he's sfp ntj quadra we know he's pragmatic systematic so he's definitely an nt so okay so he has to be an ntj all right so which is he is he direct initiating control or is he direct responding movement? Which one? Well, we know he's movement. So ergo, Seth MacFarlane, he's an INTJ. Awesome. That was unexpected. I thought he was an ENTP, but nope. He's an INTJ, a very well integrated one. Uh, very well integrated, which is pretty cool. So uh, let's move on to the next one. as I reset my whiteboard here. All right, folks, super chats are closed. Like seriously, super chats are closed. Stop super chatting. There's, there's a sign, it says closed. Please stop, please stop super chatting. Dang, okay. Um, let's go in here. Um, all right, so going back into Discord again. All right, so let's see here. Okay, so Fionn Davies, Paul Rennick, um, Charles Manson. So we just got Seth MacFarlane done, so we're good there. And uh, Windows R, Notepad, awesome. And we're just gonna copy and paste all this stuff in here for sure bradley cooper is a really nice one i actually wanted to do that so that one's done and then that one's done that one's done and uh let's actually put this down here and then uh, we got uh marky mark done here robert moreland is done as well. Robert Moreland is done as well. So yeah, talking with famous people, got that one figured out. So honestly, let's just delete these so I can actually see what I'm doing here. And uh, Teal Swan at seven. Fionn Davies total is 28. So we're going to do uh, we're going to do uh, we're going to do cool Paul Rennick is I think who we're going to do next so yeah it looks like it's Paul Rennick so correct me if I'm wrong guys on that one so okay I'm gonna do Paul Rennick and cool, let's do that now. Paul Rennick uh, interview. 
Interview and product feature. Okay. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Hi, my name's Paul Rennick. I'm here at the Innovative Percussion Headquarters. I work at the University of North Texas on the percussion faculty, and I'm the arranger, music coordinator, and percussion caption. Okay, I'm all of these things, and uh, you know, I'm a I'm a TE user because I'm Paul Rennick, and I do all these uh, I do all these things. So you know, Paul Rennick. I've done Charles Manson in the past, actually. I have done Charles Manson, and then we changed it. We changed Charles Manson to somebody else. So. Okay. Let's get some more interviews for them. Come on. Innovative, Percussion, Paul Rennick, Snare Drum Stick Review, uh, Phantom Regiment, 2008, Paul Rennick. Is this guy, like, got any, like, real uh interviews with this guy come on pr interviews he's got he's very pr focused it's like wow or texas university that might be it so one thing i noticed is that the alpha never went out of tune no matter how hard one thing i noticed is that this thing never went out of tune because it's expert at sensing he's got to be like he kind of strikes me as an intj you hit it no matter what you hit it with it was it was worth noting that the fact that it it didn't go out of tune it was worth noting that it did not go out of tune expert sensing noting was saying noting that capacity is tife this guy is sfp ntj quadra even when the weather would hit it you would not notice that it would be it was so durable uh that it it seems ideal for what we're doing it, it can, because it, we unload, load, unload yeah. up to three times a day. Yeah. We load, load, unload up to three times a day. He had two SE statements in there, um, very F-I-T-E again, uh, and seems very movement uh, with his approach. So let's keep going. Could you imagine? I mean, all that equipment, three times a day, unhooking, hooking, um, you know, things get... Bump around on the truck and stuff. We've never had. We never had one problem with that. He kind of seemed a little initiating in that exchange. Not gonna lie. So uh, we're gonna put a point down for initiating first. Um, let's let's uh, keep looking around for Paul Rennick. one it's a little more casual on that and we can we communicate on a regular basis but um like for example at the university of north texas i'll write uh everything that the the for example at the university of texas i will write so tefi look at my credentials they're so nice as i like you know smooth out my lapels for you folks you know what i'm saying you know, gotta love that T E F I, definitely S F P and T J Quadra. You know, and uh, let's keep going. Group does, in including the all, all the visual stuff as well, all the keyboard stuff, all the percussion stuff, all the drill. At, at Santa Clara, I coordinate the music. Um, Sandy and I write the percussion stuff together, and then uh, I usually goes away, and you don't know what happens to it. <laughs> You'll hear a recording sometime in the future. Very, very movement. You'll hear recording sometime in the future. Very nice abstract statement. And, uh, you know, it, it, it it's kind of out of your hands, as you guys probably know. Once you write it, that's it. You, you kind of let it go. And um, so it, it'll either, Sandy and I will sit down and talk about it i'll usually coordinate it and kind of explain the form and kind of give give certain parameters and make make everything clear as to what's supposed to happen and then there's this seems so insecure got a little se inferior going on and uh gonna have to definitely say responding so far uh, 
but uh a certain amount of freedom within that and then we just sort of typically with the other groups you, you kind of write to what that was really initiating. He keeps initiating. That was like I that was two or three initiating statements. Is this guy an ESFP, an INTJ focused ESFP? That that's interesting if that's the case. Definitely pragmatic though. Um, so let's see if he's talking what is or more what ifs. What the brass arranger does. So you're you're kind of your hands are a little bit tied. Uh, the other groups are totally open. You know, it you know, the length of the percussion things will um will vary quite a bit, you know, to whatever I think sounds good or whatever it needs more of or less of. But, uh, you know, I, there's, there's some of the groups I don't even ever hear, you know, it's, it's kind of a, a not really that, I'm going to say not, not that much fun, you know, so to write it, you hand it off and you never really hear it again. So, um, that's typical with like the groups in Japan where I won't ever, you won't ever hear it. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, I'll, I'll, then I'll, re, uh, I'll receive like an... That's super initiating. I gotta say it's a little informative as well. Wow, is he... It's hard to tell if he's con... Uh, con uh, but uh, he might be concrete. So it's like he's going back and forth between INTJ and ESFP, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, so... An email in the future, you know, like like four months later, it sounds great, you know? <laughs> or yeah. Everybody, you know, we, we won the contest tonight or something, and that, that's like, that's it. But <laughs> the drum corps, um, you hand it off and you never really hear it again. So um, that's typical with, like, the groups in Japan where I won't ever, won't ever hear it. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, I'll, I'll, then I'll, re I'll receive, like, an email in the future, you know, like, like four months later. It sounds great, you know? <laughs> or, yeah. Everybody, you know, we, we won the contest tonight or something, and that, that's like, that's it. But <laughs> the drum corps, um, the troopers are the same way as, as Vanguard, where I'm, I'm not actually the music coordinator, but um, but it's, it's, it's almost, you know, we work, I work together with uh, Robert W. Smith. And More TE, Robert W. Smith. Um, that, that his email thing was also abstract in that regard and he seems to be systematic and talking about the best way of doing these not talking about what other people are getting out of it and uh, still definitely movement but he's cognitive transitioning uh, so going back and forth like one minute he's in forward of initiating movement but some other times it seems like he's direct responding movement as well because of the cognitive transitions so let's listen a little bit more for um, the temperament so if he's an NT, he's definitely, we know for a fact that he's movement AF. So he's all about the movement. So this is really between ESFP or INTJ. That's the options at this point. But uh, definitely leading more towards INTJ. So let's hear a little bit more. And I'll go to a design meeting with him and we'll, we'll sort of sketch out the structure. And even sometimes the choice of the tune. And then, uh, you know, we'll... we'll We'll set up a roadmap, a pretty serious thing that we stick to uh, in terms of form. And then I'll come home and Sandy and I will sit together and we'll, we'll sort of map it out and then we'll work, work separately. Um, the more... Uh... And then we'll map it out and then we'll work separately. Oh yeah, there's some responding. That's what responding people when, they, uh, when they're introverted do. Uh, that work separately. It goes, I'm, I'm trying, it's funny because it's also a sign of pragmatism as well, so he's definitely pragmatic. As you ask this, I'm sort of analyzing what we do, and it's a little bit different every every time. But it's becoming more so that I stay up to all hours of the night. And she... It's becoming more so that I stay up all hours of the night, said every INTJ ever. Yeah, he's an INTJ, guys. Cool. There you go. Paul Rennick, INTJ. Awesome. Let's move on to the next one. So... Got that one, got that one. I think we've done Teal Swan in the past as well. Maybe that was on like a Patreon private uh, lecture or a private stream in the past. So, okay, we're gonna be doing, uh, let's bring me back my notepad, please. Okay, we did that one. It uh, looks like uh, Fion Davies is next, um, and uh, yeah, Fion Davies. 
Hopkins, and uh, we did Paul Rennick as well. Bion Davies is next. Thank you. And then Bradley Cooper after that. So let's do that one. Awesome. Uh, let's do this. All right, get to know powerful Fion Davies, new women's champion Fion Davies, Raspberry Ape Fion Davies. Hello and welcome back to the Raspberry Ape podcast. Continue. <laughs> we get what you mean. <laughs> I've said nothing. Uh, so anyway, <laughs> um, so you did you get into MMA before you got into jiu jitsu? Yeah. Because I know that you you have. You have four, you have four fights, MMA fights, mm. three amateur, one pro. Mm. Um, so I did my research. Oh, look at those tattoos she's got. Plus one for expert at sensing. Statistically, expert at sensors are more likely to have tattoos. Although NFPs can't have tattoos themselves because of the symbology aspect of them. Just throwing that out Don't there. Uh, <laughs> you choose the pink shorts fight on there. That's uh, a nice one. I'm Very initiating, cutting the guy off in that statement. Okay. I, I think I've... Is that your profile? No, it was my second fight, and I'm wearing these pink Nike shorts. Nike? Nike? Um, that's another debate. Uh, and they, like, ride up. Okay. Don't look online, if you're listening. <laughs> yes, slash no, watching. nobody will be searching online Do not for that look. It honestly is so embarrassing. I didn't realize they'd ride up that much, and it looks... I look like one of... I just look like a... Very informed, initiating movement, as near as I can tell, with that one. Also, extroverted sensing AF. Probably an ESFP. Like, what's, what's that crazy person in the Jesus story? Mary? Yeah. Mary Magdalene? <laughs> <laughs> because it's Easter. Wow, making a joke like that. What's that crazy person in that Jesus story? Mary? Mary Magdalene? That's pragmatic, making a statement like that on a podcast. Very pragmatic approach, for sure. <laughs> it's very... Anyway, that, that might be offensive again. Well, um, I like how you you tried to get that. You're like initiating again, still initiating. She's definitely extroverted, definitely movement for initiating movement for sure. Who's the crazy lady <laughs> in the Jesus story? <laughs> no, I just remember in school we watched the the clay Jesus. I just remember in school we watched uh, that's S E N I talking about how we remembered it, not I remembering it. Story of Easter. <laughs> yeah. When they were all cl made of clay. Yeah. Um, I just remembered Mary. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but that was me in the shorts. <laughs> I'm sorry. But that was me in the shorts. So yeah, that, and during the fight, I'm trying to like win while my shorts are riding up, and you don't want to like take your hands away to deal with that issue because someone's trying to punch you. In that the face. that is a legit so. thing though, because. Uh, mm -hmm. Like, Ronda Rousey almost lost. Because someone's going to punch her face. She did actually name drop Nike earlier. She's so going to put a point down for TE. A title fight because uh, her, she was almost almost had a wardrobe malfunction. Yeah. Went to readjust when, uh, I think it was, it was on kids training mm. and how like important kids training is. Because I, I don't think it's that important. One. And I'm going to go to jiu-jitsu to teach it. And they're going to be like, oh, well, why aren't we doing jiu-jitsu? I'm like, because there's no classes for you. Yeah. Huh. No, not right. But I'll be like, but, but you know, you oh, know well, what? I'm going, do you want to come? And they're like, yeah, yeah. And then like, they'll be really keen. I'm going to trick them into loving jujitsu. But like, I, I, I absolutely, <laughs> like, I genuinely. I'm going to trick them into loving jujitsu. That's my plan. That is uh, T-I-F-E, S-A-N-I. So we have S-F-P, N-T-J, Quadra for sure. Form of initiating movement, pragmatic, puts her at E-S-F-P. So there you go, folks. Got ourselves an E-S-F-P. It's pretty obvious she's kind of like right there in that ego not really cognitive transitioning and uh so let's uh, move on to the next one esfp okay so we have fion davies esfp which is a martial artist which is pretty cool um let's see the other one there it is cool all right awesome and and then uh jessica simpson okay 
And all right, next up is Bradley Cooper. Bradley Cooper, we got. We got Bradley Coops. Le Coops. I am very curious to see what Bradley Cooper is. I've actually always wanted to type this guy myself, so uh, let's 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 see how this goes. Uh, Bradley Cooper, um, uh, Oprah, full interview, cool, awesome. So Oscars are in a few weeks. It's been a four-year ride for you. So on February twenty-fourth, will you finally be able to? breathe and sort of let it go let what go the movie <laughs> yes uh um will it feel like done the movie felt done a while ago let what go the movie it's kind of like a ti statement verification a ti verification oh really yeah okay. yeah you know the truth is this plays into things that have nothing to do with creating art um it, it, it's it's a whole other element of the business so yes. It's really reconciling its effect on you. That that's the thing that I tend to deal with. It's like because you you don't ever do it for. I never thought ever doing anything for. First of all, it just takes too much. It's too hard. Like you said, you have to have love. Wow, that's initiating. He cut himself off in that same uh, that same uh, request, and it seems like he might be movement as well. But let's keep looking. Love to put the work in. Yes. So if it's love to get an Oscar, that that's not enough love to to put the, the work that's needed. And nobody who ever gets one is thinking about when you're making that movie. No. Oh gee, this is gonna no, be an no. Oscar. No, it's, yeah. it's the joy of doing. I mean, yes. that's why it's and then and that's why thank God you're able to put so much work in. Uh, this is more about just getting through it, really. This um, phase. Yeah, and just taking all the goodness out of it, and that's it. So. So he's talking about endurance, which is an introverted sensing standpoint, but he seems to be calling it a transitioning between an extroverted sensing side and an introverted sensing side. So I'm not sure yet. Let's keep going. The nominations, the attention, the accolades mean what to you? Where do you have that in perspective? It's so surreal, uh, you know, to be able to, 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 to grab Spike Lee yesterday and talk to him, a guy who made a movie that changed my life, uh, Do the Right Thing. When I saw that movie, it, it really, yeah, it really made me rethink what I thought I knew, even as a young man growing up in Philadelphia. You know, that movie caused me to rethink what I thought I knew. That was T-I-F-E, uh, statement for sure. Philadelphia. So to be in that world, you know, I remember the first time I was nominated, Daniel Day-Lewis. I was in the same category with Daniel Day-Lewis and Denzel Washington and, and Hugh Jack. I was in the same category as uh, Denzel Washington, Danny Day Lewis. That kind of seems like expert at sensing. He's all over the place. Excellent balance of cognitive transitions. Backman, and it was just, you know, to be there this year with Christian Bale, yeah. uh, Viggo Mortensen, and Rami Malek, you know, and, and to be a director now, it's so surreal, Oprah, to be honest. I mean, it doesn't make any sense. Um, so I just try to breathe through it, be present for it and take all the goodness I but can. But that's a great it. experience in that room, though, because there's no pressure. Nobody's yes. going to be announced who's a winner. Yes. So nobody has to lose. That's the right. The luncheon is so great for that reason, yeah. right? But the truth is, it never feel. You only feel like you're a loser when people treat you like it afterwards. <laughs> you only feel like you're a loser when people treat you like it afterwards. That's an F.E. statement, if I've ever heard one. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, that's the only downside, because the, the award show ends, and people are like, they sort of, first of all, they avoid you a little bit. Uh, FJBZ3 said in the chat, quote, he said it's about enjoying the process. Isn't that movement? Absolutely it is. Yes, it is. Thank you for pointing it out, mister. Uh, I appreciate that. But, and then they, they, they do say like, you know, it, it was a good movie. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, oh, thanks, 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 thanks. I was surprised, I gotta admit, that you were not nominated for Best Director. Oh, thank you. Were you surprised? Oh, thank you, Effie, you know. Um, Gonna, gonna put another point for SE and I. He might be STP and FJ. Surprised by that? Disappointed by that? Or did you just take it in stride? Uh, I was not surprised. You uh, were not? I'm never surprised about not getting anything. Uh, but, but I'm never surprised about not getting anything, said every FE user ever. His self deprecation, which FE users typically do, is present. But I did feel, you know, I, and it's funny you ask it because I have thought about this. Because I was with my friend, I was in New York City at a coffee shop, and I looked down at my phone, and Nicole had texted me. And they said, you know, congratulations on these other things, but they didn't tell me the bad news. Yes. You know, and I went. Congratulations on these things, but they didn't tell me the bad news. They didn't tell me. Ex Experted sensing seems very uh, movement still. Let's keep going. Oh, wow. And, and the first thing I felt was embarrassment, actually. Oh. Well, think about it. It's a, I felt embarrassed that I didn't do my part. 
I felt embarrassed I didn't do my part, that I didn't contribute. Normally I'd say that is actually a TE statement because the word embarrassed is usually attached to TE, but he augmented it within as like, I didn't contribute, I didn't put in my contribution, which is also more of like an SEFE thing, actually emulating a TE uh, concept. So this guy is looking really close to um, uh, NFJ STP Quadra, which is very, very interesting. Um, we'll see how that keeps going. I'll work on that. It'll be, you know. yeah. <laughs> but, but that was the first. I was, well, I'm glad you at but least that said sense. that. But that makes sense. Think about it. I mean. But, but my thing is, I would, I'm, I'm at least glad you said that because if I were you, I would be feeling some kind of way mm -hmm. about it. Yeah, embarrassment. I went, I went, oh gosh, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't do my job. But you know you did. I, I did. I'm embarrassed. I didn't do my job. Very F-E, very S-E. Is this, is this like S-E inferior? I do, yes. Because how do you get... No my thing is, how do you get nominated for Best Picture when the director has it directed if you... if you? Yeah, they're kind of an F-E loop. Because the expert feeling from Oprah, because she's an ESFJ, is like causing him... They're kind of making each other uncomfortable. She's trying to get him to feel something. He doesn't want to feel anything because he's got low FI. He's just not really interested in doing that. Um, Aren't a best director. But the truth is, even if I got the nomination, that should not give me any sense of whether I did my job or not. That's the truth. Oh, if I never got the nomination, that should not be whether or not I actually got my job or not. You know, that's the truth. You know, okay, fair enough. That's actually a very affiliative point of view. Uh, it's kind of very focused on doing the right thing. It's actually also an interest-based statement, if you think about it, because it's not a win-win with the other party who is like metaphysically there, which kind of seems like an abstract standpoint. He really sounds like an idealist when he's making that point. And, uh, and definitely like expert sensing, talk about performance. This guy seems to have performance anxiety, expert sensing inferior. Trick. Yes. That's let's, let's actually look at a different interview with Bradley Cooper, just to verify. I, I want to verify this before we, uh, uh, hit this all the way through. Um, so let's see. Uh... Okay. He co-stars with Lady Gaga in his new film, A Star is Born. It's in theaters this Friday. Go check it out. I saw it last night. I, dude, I loved it so much. Oh, and you were just amazing. And after uh, Gaga, I know we all know she can sing, but she can act. Oh man, and, she's incredible. And you guys together, did you guys know each other? Did you? Oh man, she's incredible. I'm just gonna, you know, talk her up, F E S C it up, you know what I'm saying? Because I'm STP NFJ Quadra. No, no. I, you know, we had met on Saturday Night Live, like in passing years ago, but, and it's one of those things, you know, you, you, you see somebody and then you have no idea, like five years from now, you're gonna be doing this crazy thing together. I mean, this is, she, this is a knockout performance yeah, from she her really, as well. Yeah, she really brought it. Yeah, I saw her sing La Vie en Rose uh, at this cancer benefit at Sean Parker's house and she just decimated the room. Yeah. And that's why that scene's in the movie. And then I met her at her house in the, two days later and, um, and we just clicked. I don't know if I'm time, but I'm gonna say it anyway. I, yeah, <laughs> what happens? <laughs> yeah, see, there's, no rule, there's no rules here, man. We love you, dude. We, no rules. But I was, I was, uh, what happens? I went, <laughs> I went around, uh, did like this regional tour in this last week. <laughs> it's like two seconds left. Anyways, regional tour, two seconds. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> I'm sorry. You're at a regional store? <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. All right, Siri, where are you? This is not what I <laughs> Where are you at? Where are you? I'm in a regional tour around regional the country. Tour. I'm oh, a regional sorry, tour, tour. A tour around the country. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I stopped in my high school <laughs> and I played the movie from my high school. There was this guy there who <laughs> I got a lot of There is this guy there, very expert sensing still. Um clothing on. I think that's it. A... Oh, you look great, by the way. That's a beautiful oh, suit. Absolutely. This is the same suit I wore uh, I think like like last time I was here. <laughs> Is it I mean, really? we could check it, but I feel like it is, yeah. Because I think it had egg on. I got egg. Remember we did the egg oh, thing? Oh, the egg brush. Yeah, right. yeah. I think this is the same suit. Oh, no way. I swear, yeah. We are hang We hung that photo in the in Oh, the we should check. That is so expert at sensing inferior with T.I. Child. Oh, we should check. <laughs> Not right now. I'm yeah, just, yeah, 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 yeah. We should go check. <laughs> should no, we just go check? I mean, could run out there and check. We could run out and check. I mean, if you want to. I mean, we don't have lighting or anything, but we can just... Okay. We Let's just go just check, check it out. That could be an acting thing too. So I'm uh, I'm not really gonna make any judgments yet. Let's do let's do um, something a little bit else. 
Uh, let's do Ellen. Thank you for I, being here. I know just want to verify, guys. You know. You are and I so hard to sing. No, I'm not saying I'm good, right. but I sing. Oh, I just, like, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I so, guess that's true. Like, people cook, but then there's cooking. Right, exactly. Yeah, yeah. I, You're I, a good cook. I know that. Good cook, but You're, to be like an amazing chef. Yeah. It's like, yeah. So singing is, is, I had no idea. I just felt like I would get fatigued at the end of even a, like. A so we're going to love you. All right. Well, thank you. Yes. No, it's true because you're an amazing actor. And when you take something on. Meaning new. Oh, oh sorry. Yeah. <laughs> this is part of the. And I was watching it just this morning. And I just thought like, we got to go not so founding fathers ask. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, we got to go not so founding fathers. That's affiliative. Very, very affiliative. And uh, seems to be answering in the context there and still staying direct. He's not really informing as much. So yeah, he's an INFJ. There you guys go. INFJ. So going to do the next one on that one. Oops, let's just like not erase like everything on the board here. Let's get to the next one. Okay, so we did Bradley Cooper. Then we got, uh, let's see who's next. Um, baby uh, Post Malone, who's that? Let's see. Okay, that's a person. I would always try to, you know, liven things up and, and tell it differently. But at at some point, you might you, catch you yourself. Run, you run out of and, and you, you, and you catch shit. yourself out as well doing yeah. that stuff. Then you start saying things in jest, and then they get taken. Right, and you know, and, and you know, it's like being a kid is is hard, and then coming into this world where you're you're everybody can see every move that you make is. Everybody could see every move that you make, said every uh, extroverted sensing TE user, because I'm automatically SFP NTJ Quadra while simultaneously also being direct responding movement AF because I'm Mr. Post Malone. Wow, all that information right off the bat sounds fantastic. It's, you know, mm. it's different. It's something, it's a new experience. And, you know, I've learned so much and I've grown so much and I... Um... I'm just doing my best every day, golden rule, treat people the way they want to be treated and just drive and be the best person that I can be and mm. make sure that whenever I have a baby, mm -hmm. my baby's taken care of and all my friends and family are taken care of. Make sure whenever I have a baby, all of, that's a very abstract statement, uh, make sure they're taken out. He's very pragmatic with all of his uh, tattoos as well. And that was also talking about a system. Let's hear a little bit more. Looking like he's an INTJ to me, but let's keep going. Taking care of and mm -hmm. everything, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. God, even just in the last 12 months, you think about it, I mean, Stoney was out of control. And, sure. then, and then, you know, your last... Anything massive. You know what I mean? I'm not trying to make hit records. I'm just trying to make something that I love. And I know that everything in music is is shifting into a place where there's like something i love and then everything in music is shifting something i love t-e-f-i s-e-n-i and then it's also an abstract statement make something i love yeah and everything in this uh, everything in the industry is shifting so that's a systematic approach as well you look at all the genre bending and everything now that's just like this you look at all the genre uh the genre bending as well like spread sensing abstract abstract uh Again, you know, so yeah, he, he's an INTJ. There's really no reason to go forward with this. This guy is an INTJ, hands down. Like, all the information's already there. Not going to spend so much more time on Post Malone. He's an INTJ. So, cool. Okay. Thank you, uh, Jennifer Stone, for that one. And uh, let's move on to the next one. Steven Tyler from Aerosmith. Steven Tyler. All right. All 
Okay, Ryan's full interview with Steven Speaking Tyler. of which, uh, I can't even count on all of our fingers how many... Speaking of which, I'm informed of initiating movement AF because I'm Ryan Seacrest. ...nominations Aerosmith has had, but uh, Steven Tyler is with... And I'm dressed comfortably because I'm obviously an S-I-N-E user with experted intuition, and honestly, I think Ryan Seacrest is an ENTP, folks. Focus ...on this uh, Grammy weekend. What's up, brother? Hey, hey, hey. Hey. Thank you for having me. Hey, man. Uh, it's so good to see you. I haven't seen you in a minute. Well, yeah, it's been a while. You know, but you look you look exactly ageless, which is good. Thank you kindly. <laughs> Are you still getting up every day and doing the workout routine that I know you're religious about for a long time? I am. I am. It's uh, it's infectious. I remember what? when we were doing Idol. Yeah. I try to wake up before you. I get up at six o'clock, <laughs> of course. You know, <laughs> after five hours of sleep, I never in my life did that. And then yeah. go on and do idle with yeah. five hours of sleep. But I'd go down to the gym, and who was there with a trainer but you? Yeah. <laughs> well, so it, it's it, once you get into it, it's, it's fun. So what are you mm -hmm. doing on a regular basis? What's your routine? Well, I just went to Maui, but before that, of course, we're on tour. So yeah, that's crazy. It's like you know, you you uh, you fly from from L.A. to to England. You do you know, you fly from L.A. to England because I'm expert at sensing, and I haven't chosen my thing here. So let's do Steven Tyler. As well, awesome. Do a show, and after the show, you do a runner. You go to France, and you sleep. What's in a France. runner? It's uh, something a girl gets in her stocking. <laughs> the run. It's um, isn't that funny? That's the old days. Well, yeah. now it's a runner. It means after a show, you get on the plane right away, and then fly to France. So you're in bed at France at five in the morning, going, Amy, where did we wake up this morning? Right. You don't. <laughs> Amy. Where do we wake up this morning? As he and I, <laughs> he's like so movement as well, <laughs> and definitely pragmatic. Come on, <laughs> I don't know where, where you are. Where are we? Yeah. So. Uh, did you have you ever been out on stage and actually n not quite been a hundred percent sure which city you were in? Positive. I have it. In fact, every night I have it written down in front of me. You have to. Good evening, Oregon. <laughs> and, I'm in, and I'm in South Bend, Indiana. <laughs> you know, it just becomes a big blur, you know. Right, right. That, that coupled with substances, which I don't do anymore, but it doesn't matter. <laughs> I come well, to find out it doesn't matter. When, when you're that busy. I, I come to find out it doesn't matter. Very initiating. You know what I'm saying? Very initiating and very informative. Um, so... And yeah. I'm, I'm talking about the Grammys this weekend. Can you think back? Do you remember the first Grammys that you guys all attended and were a part of? Yeah, I do. And we were really pissed off because it cost us seven, eight hundred thousand dollars. Oh yeah, I do. It cost us seven thousand, eight thousand dollars. TFI. Okay. All right, Mr. SFP at TJ Quadra. Okay. <laughs> what happened? To fly the whole band and crew in to play at the Grammys. And we didn't get we didn't get back. It was you're on, you're getting a Grammy, you're playing, and it was holy, you know what? We're doing this, and you get there and you find out that, you know, what? You're not getting paid. But uh, wait, you know, wait, 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 you double edged what? sword. You find out what? Well, that the Grammys don't pay for your anything. <laughs> you didn't <laughs> so ask you bring, before you went. Oh yeah, we did, and they said, listen, you're getting a Grammy. Oh yeah, we did. Expert sensing, they don't pay for it. TFI. <laughs> <laughs> very interest-based, being aware of what he gets out of the situation, etc. He's very concrete, only stating that what is and for initiating movements obvious. So, Mr. Steven Tyler is an ESFP. So, there you have it, folks. No reason to uh, go any further. He is an ESFP. So, that's cool. Doing an INTJ and then an ESFP, same quadra, for sure. Uh, within those, uh, within those two types. So, pretty awesome to be able to do that. Let's look at who's next on the list here. Okay. And, uh, all right, so Jessica Simpson, we can do that. Uh, Jessica Simpson, uh, interview. Ha, I think we did Jessica Simpson previously. Um, very exciting. Uh, it's very exciting to I'm not pregnant. I doubt it. Um, but. We'll have to look it up. Okay. I have two beautiful children. Yep. And I'm not having That's a third. That's it. Are you sure you're not pregnant? I heard <laughs> yes. that you were pregnant. Oh, gosh. 
No. You're not We pregnant. got an IUD. Is it not, nothing getting, is going to get in that uterus? Okay, this is, like, super uncomfortable. It has this presence of, like, whoa! And the sound is just bothering me. It's going to do a different interview, please. Simpson doesn't. These launched more than. But every body type, I truly believe that, you know, it's not just about high fashion. We all need pieces in our wardrobe that are fashionable, but accessible, wearable, you know, and affordable. I think that that's really what has. It's not all about high fashion. We need things that are accessible, affordable, because like I am a TE user, LOL. And my name is Jessica Simpson, yo. And then, uh, yeah. Cool. And uh, yeah, it sounds pragmatic AF. Made the brand such a success. Success is now synonymous with just about everything Simpson lends her name. It was awesome because it's always been a part of the word fancy. We're coming up on our... It's always been part of the word uh, fancy, and like I'm also expert at sensing, and I can't believe it. Uh, yet another SFP and TJ Quadro we're doing again. And this is when the audience starts claiming that, oh, Mr. CSJ, you're just so biased, you know, looking at all your types because you keep doing SFP and TJ Quadra over and over and over again. So you're obviously just being lazy right now during your own stream, er, you know, in before the critics, right? 10 year anniversary with the Jessica Simpson collection. And I thought there would be no better way than to just launch a signature fragrance with that. At home, Simpson's also got her hands full with two young. Um, I'm always with my loving fiance who I adore more than anything. And well, of course my kids, they're all equal. <laughs> really all of it secret, but is there anything you can tell anyone? What kind of wedding do you think it'll be? It'll definitely be extravagant. Okay. I don't do things small. <laughs> It'll definitely be extravagant. I don't do anything small, you know. She's very initiating, but I gotta say, she's actually controlled, not movement. I have not really seen movement out of her. I mean, it kind of, you'd think it's that way, but I'm just not really seeing that. It's just, does she have expert sensing trials? Is this an ENTJ we're talking about? Let's find out. <laughs> It's a journey of fame and fortune that Jessica Simpson has learned to take in stride. Just thinking about you getting started so young in this industry or the entertainment industry, you had your first record when I think you were 19 years old. <laughs> what would you tell that Jessica Simpson, if you could, about the future and about how to handle fame? Hold on. <laughs> this is gonna be a long ride. <laughs> and I, I couldn't be, you know, I couldn't be happier. She really oh, does yeah. seem so happy, yeah. in command, incredible. All right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's go back to the other interviews. Hello. How are you? I'm awesome. I haven't seen you in a while. I know, it's been a while. And are you still in my old house? I am, and I'm loving it. Good. I'm, I'm glad I haven't seen any of those creatures, though, that are <laughs> well, roaming around your house. You're not all right, yeah, I'm glad I haven't seen any of those creatures, though, you know. And, uh, yeah, so that's S-E-N-I. Also talking about Ellen's house is very T-E as well. It's far from me. You're, you're, we're right down the road. I'm oh, so I could see something. Maybe. And I, I went through a lot with everybody saying that I gained all this weight, mm -hmm. and I just didn't think that it was fair, so I thought that it'd be amazing to travel the world and see what women do to feel beautiful, to look beautiful, what their expectation of beauty is. Other people's expectation of what beauty is, what their standard of beauty is, that's expert sensing, see what other people are doing, that's TEFI, definitely SFB and TJ Quadra. Seems pretty, uh, you know, open in that regard. It um, seems to be the best way of doing something in her mind. So it's actually a systematic approach, uh, as near as I could tell. And she seems to be very direct and still in control. So direct initiating control, uh, SFP NTJ Quadra would automatically lend her as an ENTJ, actually, which is pretty interesting. I kind of want to verify this, though. Let's keep going in all these countries so we traveled the world and it was unbelievably amazing what is the most surprising thing that you have found um we went to uganda and in uganda we went into this tribe to this into in uganda we went expert sensing this village and the fatter you are the more beautiful you are so a bride has to go and be in a fattening hut for about two months and gain over 90 pounds for her husband 
Wait, wait, wait. What if she's fat already? Does she have to get fatter? They're not. <laughs> They're not fat. No. So, so then he he says, let's. Uh, so she is a cow, so they want their women to look like cows. So it's a compliment because they're all giggling and think all women trying to. It's yeah. So that is a strange thing. So yeah. To to be uh, so they're unattractive if they're thinner. Mm hmm And they decided uh, they just went crazy over that photo mm -hmm. for some reason. For some reason, yep. Everybody was just harping on me gaining some aren't a size four or a size six feel. Big. Oh, I feel so bad about myself that this is what people are doing to me, etc. You know and. Uh, <laughs> it's kind of interesting how that works. Very expert sensing, kind of a lower expert sensing. Definitely not movement, direct initiating control, uh, like just still control as much as we could tell. Um, and uh, kind of like, okay, is this being lately affiliative? No, not necessarily. You know, I'm just going to do whatever I want at the end of the Big, day. You know, I, I, I didn't like where I was being put in the public, right. you know, in the public world. Why do you so. think they're so hard on you? Why do you, why do you do you feel? I mean, because I feel like they're hard on you. Why they do you... always are? Um, I think because I I think they always want to try and take me down, but I'm kind of invincible. I kind of just really just get back up and and fight for myself and my place. Said every ni parent uh, ever. I just get back for myself and I fight. You know, very pragmatic approach. So yeah, Jessica Simpson is an ENTJ, which who'd have thunk? That's kind of cool. I like that she's an ENTJ. Seems like she's an ISFP focused uh, ENTJ uh, as well. Um, so uh, good on her for uh, figuring that out as a uh, as a performer as well. So okay, Jessica Simpson is down, and we have uh, Bill Gates next. Let's do that. Let's do a Bill Gates interview. Bill Gates. Bill Gates, talking tech and saving the world with Bill Gates. Why not? A conversation with Bill Gates, uh, Q&A at Harvard. Okay. You have simply been profound. Today, the New England Journal of Medicine published an article. Uh, I kid you not, the name of the... Uh, Ivan Galik, uh so in TJs can write very splendid melodies because they have extroverted sensing child, which has, the child function has a serious divinity about it, which is very important. And that divinity gives it the ability to actually have quite frankly, exceptional work. And then especially if she's gotten over her FI inferior and is able to access through that FI inferior gateway, her ISFP subconscious, she can actually perform even better compared to other successful ISFPs, which we just learned Lacey Sturm recently is a successful ISFP uh, performer. Jessica Simpson, Lacey Stern, you can see a difference between ISFP and ENTJ. Study is Mordor. But uh, <laughs> a study about the use of some very simple antibiotics given twice a year. Uh, but it was an amazing course. Uh, the people who majored in economics uh, were at a disadvantage because knowing math was very helpful uh in that that course but it was people knowing math was very helpful in that course that's a te statement if i've ever heard one and he's talking about other people so far so this is uh bill gates so hopefully uh who knows we could be people are like oh he's an intp i've always maintained he's an entj but i could be wrong let's verify uh fantastic for the people in the back, I don't know if you can read it, uh, the instructor's little comment in the lower corner there says, arithmetic error, no sweat. <laughs> <laughs> well, Bill, we just had a really fun hour and a half, two hours with the robotics folks uh, in the engineering school here, touring various labs. And I'm wondering if you would share with this community your impressions of what you saw happening in robotics and the implications of that technology for humans, the impact, good, bad, and otherwise. Well, robotics is a, a very broad field at a very early stage, and there's some exciting and promising things that are come out of it. Normally, when we think of it, we think of a human-sized, sort of a lot of metal type uh, contraption that's doing things humans would do, like cleaning up a room uh, or, or being an infantry soldier 
or some sort of manufacturing job. The work here is taking robotics in, in many dimensions into different realms. Uh, so I saw the robot B, which is a tiny little B-sized robot that can fly around. Uh, you know, it doesn't quite uh, go anywhere Autonomous yet, but yeah. it's a, uh, <clears throat> I'm sure they'll get that figured out. I also saw a lot of what they called soft robotics, where instead of having uh, metal parts, uh, you have actually fabric I also saw this, I saw that. That's actually two SI statements, interesting. And either through hydraulics or pneumatics, uh, you're manipulating this, uh, you know, I wore a glove that the air pressure pneumatically would uh, provide gripping. And so it's both thinking of enhancing humans who have normal functionality and taking people who say have had a stroke or ALS and, and allowing them to do normal functions uh, despite that disability. And so robotics is... That's pretty informative. That's informative for sure. And he's definitely control. Wow, he might actually be an INTP. And this is one of the cases where my first impression about someone is incorrect. This is getting good. Now I'm liking this. Let's, let's look at another come, interview. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Together. First of all, the annual letter. Can you summarize the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation annual letter in like a sentence or two? Uh, well, Melinda and I get a chance to go all over the world, particularly uh, in Africa where a lot of our health work is. Uh, we go into a lot of classrooms where our education work is. And so every year we try to think, okay, what would other people be interested in? in terms of new innovation. What would other people be interested in in terms of innovations? And Melinda and I are helping people, which is an FE statement, is also S-I-N-E. Wow, it's getting closer to INTP, folks. Things that are going well, going poorly. Uh, this year we framed it as surprises. Right. Uh, you know, so I was studying the population growth in different countries and the age pyramid in different countries. And so, you know, I'm finally seeing some good uh, technology used in the classroom to try and uh, let the teacher focus in on uh, really talking to the students and not just grading the homework. So that was another one and it is actually uh, quite a diverse set of things that uh, we made our surprise list. So one of the things I read that I found really interesting in it was you sort of broke down the biggest contributors to INTPs over time can develop movement-like tendencies as they develop their ESFJ subconscious actually and move a lot in their chair because they're just kind of getting more and more excited about playing within their expert feeling inferior. So just understand that when you're using the other sides of your mind, you can take on the interaction style properties of that other side of the mind as you get older and are able to balance yourself between those two in case you're wondering. Let's, uh, let's go a little bit. Uh, let's look at more. I'm so happy to have you here. This is the first time having you on, so thanks. So I know you were you were nervous about the entrance. So you thought I think people feel like they're supposed to dance, and so. So when you became a billionaire. Yeah. Right. Okay. So well, it's just the most important thing. Yeah. <laughs> so did you when you were a kid? Did you? It, it, did you care about money or you just cared about technology and that's it just happened? Uh, mostly I love software. Uh, I do remember at the private school I went to there were other kids whose families were better off like they had a Porsche or something but it wasn't that that big of a deal. My thing was that I just loved doing software, I loved hiring people and I was stunned when it ended up being so valuable. Really? Yeah. You, <laughs> it surprised you? Yeah. Because I always had to be careful that we wouldn't hire too many people. I was always worried because I was people who worked for me were older than me and they had kids. And I always thought, well, what if we don't get paid? Will I be able to meet the payroll? So I was always very conservative about the finances. And then when we did go uh, public. Uh Guys, that dance was fake because he had a green screen uh, head added to someone else doing the dance. Let's be straight. Uh, what was I? Uh, 30 by then, uh, then I was kind of stunned at what it multiplied out to. Right. So when you... Still kind of more of an introverted sensing standpoint, basically. 
Gonna have to put another one down for introverted sensing, talking about his past. He's not really saying it through the eyes of other people. Became a billionaire. At what point did you start relaxing? Were you still nervous when you became a billionaire? Like, I gotta watch this? Uh, well, I always wanted to have enough money in the bank so that even if our customers didn't pay us for a year, we could still uh, keep paying everybody and do the R&D. So I, I so I always wanted to have enough money in the bank. Okay, is he talking about, ooh, I feel good about having money in the bank? Which an FI user would do? No, he's talking about having enough money in the bank to be able to pay people on his team because he's putting the people above the money, folks. That's an FE statement. That's not an FITE statement, okay? I'd still be viewed as conservative. Um, you know, there I don't have that many things that are extravagant tastes, so uh, didn't change too much. So nothing really changed. So you didn't say, "Oh, I'm gonna buy a Porsche." I did. Okay, I, that, all right. I did. Uh, yeah, <laughs> you did. All right. Yeah, that was that was an indulgence, and uh, I did buy a Porsche. That was an indulgence. That's S I N E, and it could also be T I F E in terms of self-deprecation. And eventually, if you think about for it. my travel, I got a plane, which is a huge indulgence. So those. And eventually for my travel, I got a plane, which is also a huge indulgence. That's T-I-F-E, actually. For my two Well, not cents. really, because you travel all the time, so right. that's important. I can kind of identify with that, because if, let's say, one day I became a billionaire, the only thing I'd really actually, like, truly want to, like, buy for myself as, like, my gift to myself would be an Audi R8 Spider. Let's be straight. But, like, am I really going to get anything else? Am I going to have the huge-ass mansion one day, like, as an NTP? No, I'm not going to do that. Like, how many uh, like how many people could I, like, uh, pay or make their lives better versus, like, having some huge-ass mansion? I, I, I kind of identify with where uh, Bill Gates is going with on this. And, heck, I might make him an NTP because I'm an NTP. Important that you have a plane. So you have a Porsche and a plane, and that's it. Uh, well, in terms of crazy things, yeah. Yeah. There's not like any like wild, like you didn't build like an aquarium with sharks in it or something like that. Uh, we have a trampoline room in our house. Oh, the, wow. The kids like. We have a trampoline room in our house at every SI child ever. <laughs> very informative, responding control. Uh, very uh, systematic. That's kind of a pragmatic standpoint as well. Like that indoor trampoline. That I recommend it. I, <laughs> I recommend it. Just one giant. That's a that's an expert intuition TIFE statement as well. I recommend it. You know, as I always say, not recommend it. SFJ and TP Quadra for sure, guys. Trampoline? Yeah. Yeah, it's a room with a very high ceiling. Well, yeah, I hope. Yeah. yeah that would be, that would be cruel if you didn't put a high ceiling in there. Just go on, kids. Uh, into your foundation. Yep. 40 billion. And um and you've I the people um my wife, Melinda, and I picked global health as our big thing. The fact that still we have 5 million kids who die under the age of 5. Uh, now, it was over 10 million when we got started, so there's been huge progress over the last... Uh, with new uh, drugs and vaccines and getting them out. The second biggest thing is... I mean, is he not, like, just dressed like an INTV? The guy's dressing for, dressing for comfort. Come on, guys. It's all in the U.S., which is trying to help improve the education system here. Yeah, that which needs... Boy... Right? Yeah, I get that eco stentialism, but think about it. When you have another INTP out there like, you know, Elon Musk, who creates the Boring Company, and they literally have a flamethrower that's not legally named a flamethrower, for example, that's a huge waste of resources, don't you think? You know? SI Child's got to have their little indulgences, right? I mean, and, and how do you do that? I, I always think you get what you're paying out of their own pocket to take phenomenal teachers and so the dream is that you could take that top 10 percent and have them help the others to get best practices uh the best teaching ideas to spread all over the country and and how you know we're listening to you obviously teaching ideas to spread all over the country um so yeah that's a very interesting approach it's also systematic that was also abstract as well so there you go have there you have it folks i was wrong audience was more right I was wrong. Bill Gates and INTP. That's fantastic. That's really fantastic, folks. Love it. And let's see who's next. We're going to do Teal Swan again. Uh, a verification of Teal Swan. Oh my goodness. I think I've done Teal Swan in the past. But uh, we'll take a look. Okay. Bill Gates. 
And yep. Alan the Generous is like a form initiating movement. All right. Uh, there we go. You talk to me. This is so exciting. This is such a great experience because I'm initiating because I'm Ellen DeGeneres, LOL, right? Look at that black that she's wearing, right? I'm initiating and I'm informative, you know? This is a great experience, S I N E. It's like, you know, that one character is always easily excited on League of Legends. That's literally Ellen DeGeneres, right? Jinx. Please, you ask me questions and we turn it around. Man, this is so weird. Are you having fun? I, I am having fun so I told far. you if you danced, it would be the, the right thing. I'm glad you took my advice. You're right. It I really will. took you over. I had no idea <laughs> that you were so ready for it. Look, I love me some 90s. Yeah. <laughs> it just possesses me. A little black me. box. <laughs> yeah. yeah. My, I yeah. love them. They this had like so two strange. songs. Yeah, they do actually. Yes. yes. They only have two. It was that and what was the other song? I'm, no, this Somebody is yours. Will find you, out. you knew the second it one. Was, <laughs> that was everybody dance. Was it sweat? What was it? Sweat? I got the power. I got... Was it sweat or what was that? Okay, so that's S that's T I F E verification. Looking back at our own past is introverted sensing. Yeah. Oh, I got the power. That's yes. right. Nice pull. Good one. Nice pull. Good one. Thanks. All right. So what do we do now? So how am I doing? Uh, you should ask me some questions. You okay. know, like you know what I have planned for Thanksgiving, stuff like that. What do you have planned for Thanksgiving? <laughs> this is going. Yeah, not having that. That's also indicative of introverted sensing. Not like having a, a futuristic plan through introverted intuition. Well, all right. You cool. should think of things on your own, like well, you know. Oh, I thought, did you, what did don't you do they for prepare Halloween this or... stuff or something? Don't they prepare you? No. Usually, yeah. You you didn't repair repair. <laughs> I, I repaired. Yeah. I, I did the repairing. I, I didn't see. do the preparing. Let's say uh, we could talk about. What do you want to what talk do, about? I don't know. Look. What do you want to talk about? Expert intuition. Okay, as I'm informed, initiating movement AF, right? Wherein, <laughs> yeah. So I'm informed, initiating AF. So okay, that means I am SFJ NTP quadra so far. So I'm looking at ESFJ, is Alan ESFJ or is she an ENTP, huh? Which one do you think, folks? Which one do you think? How about, um, let's see, this is really hard. This stuff is like really, really, really hard. I know, it's like, like having have... a conversation and everything. I know, it's yeah. nuts. <laughs> Did you have this like much of a hard time like in your first season? Early on? Yeah. No, but you know, before I started my show, they... Uh... No, I didn't have a problem, very T-I-F-E, okay. <laughs> asked me no no i didn't <laughs> very initiating again she keeps fumbling over herself because she's an obvious starter type and very informative very movement Pretty easy. <laughs> but they asked me to like interview people to show that i could talk to people which i thought was the weirdest thing so at my house um alanis morissette and tom hanks and uh helen hunt and somebody else came over and they recorded me having a conversation with them so that they could approve that i could talk to people i had to like audition were well, you not talking to the people that were trying i had to audition uh, as i statement as well uh which is kind of funny if you think about it I'm trying to give you the job <laughs> yes yes <laughs> obviously not well enough no nope. i didn't ask them enough questions people like to to hear you know people like to talk about themselves so that's why it's right. usually like, how are you? Tell me about you. People like to talk about themselves because I'm F.E. How are you? How is this? That's also like, um, I could argue abstract versus concrete there. So how are the kids? Stuff like that. So that's why I'm being you, quiet right now. Right. Because you don't want to know anything about me. No. I say, I say, <laughs> you should come over for Thanksgiving in okay. case now that people are interested, you should be there. Yeah. This yeah. is going to be really weird if and I'm not I there now. <laughs> you, it'll be you. It'll be there, but I'm not going there. I ain't going to be there at Thanksgiving. Okay, well, that's very interesting. That's kind of a lower SI, and that's actually a very pragmatic statement. That was not affiliative at all. You and your family and your daughter who uh, is going to go to therapy now. Are you going to have... <laughs> your daughter who's going to go uh, to therapy now. Very interesting lampoon and also uh, pragmatic. I have no spine. Yeah. Uh, zero spine. Yeah. I just go ahead and ruin my daughter. You have a good spine. You have a nice, sexy spine. <laughs> Thank you. You have a good show. spine. You... you have a nice, sexy spine. Okay, that's uh, that's equitable and very uh, pragmatic as well. I don't need to go any further with this. Ellen DeGeneres is an ENTP. There you go. Le ENTP. Of course, I've said before in the past she's an ENTP, as we've like seen so many of her uh, interviews thus far. Definitely. 
Okay. And then, folks, we have finally Teal Swan. So let's see how that goes. Good old Teal Swan. Okay. I don't want to change myself in order to fit into what makes you tick. But that's the point. What's the point? If you have to do that, there is no relationship. Right. And what's going to be very difficult for people is to realize that if you're surrounded by people who don't care about those things, that's not a relationship. What was your pro- Wow, if these people don't care about those things, that that's not a relationship. That's very affiliative, and that might be T-I-F-E if I've ever heard it as well. Is this an INFJ? Process then. Is this something you discovered? Is that guy an INFP talking to her? Or an ENFP? Or something you just realized? That, and, and what did you do about it? Okay, so here's the thing. I always thought... I did not do Sofia Coppola. I will do it, Josh Tobar, I promise. I will not end the show until I've done Sofia Coppola, all right? The loneliness was something that was just me. Mm -hmm. That's what loneliness does, that's what pain does in general. It convinces you you're the only one that feels it. And uh, it convinces you it's the only one that feels it. That is S-E-N-I-T-I-F-E, -E, very affiliative. It's also interest based. She's also very uh, movement direct. I this is basically like a token INFJ, folks. So when I kind of did this thing where I developed a community and I got beyond some of the loneliness, I kind of chalked that up to you know Teal is the only one that has this issue. It wasn't until I started doing what I'm doing for a career now and I was landing on all these different continents, talking to people from all walks of life, all generations, and they all said the same thing. Which was I feel lonely. Uh -huh. They all said the same thing. I feel lonely. It's S-E-N-I, T-I-F-E, S-T-P, N-F-J, Quadra. And she's abstract as well as affiliative. She's an N-F, so she's an E-N-F-J or an I-N-F-J. And it was at that point that I was like, okay, this is an issue that goes so far beyond me. Mm -hmm. And so that was the first layer. Second layer was I was really starting to understand, you know, being a teacher of integration, I was starting to really understand separation and how it plays out. And I started to see that loneliness is actually the heart of every crime ever committed, mm -hmm. every war ever waged, illnesses, addictions. And this is what I mean, ready? I can't rob you unless I'm disconnected from you. Right. If I steal your stuff, I have to perceive that that's not going to... Someone explain to me why she's really informative. I don't see how she's informative at all. She seems to be straight and to the point, right? She's not making any statements where it has like additional connotations come back at me somehow or I'm not going to feel the impact of that injury towards you so there first has to be a perception of separation for any crime to occur or kill Ooh, a perception of separation for any t crime to occur that is an abstract statement it's also direct she's pretty movement as well and uh, very effy with that talking about what other people are experiencing as a result let's look at a different uh, interview with her Let's see. So that we can also post this on YouTube. And for those who are experiencing something that yeah, did not have my best interest at heart. Correct. Oh, that person did not have my best interest at heart because I'm interest based because I'm an NF, right? Who wanted to use all of those abilities towards his cult behavior and cult groups. So, yeah. She's looking down like that, super insecure. That's the inferior. She's also responding. Uh, that's pretty responding. So yeah, there you have it, folks. Teal Swan is an INFJ. So, all right, cool. And we're gonna be doing Sofia Coppola. Sophia Coppola. Let's uh, let's do let's do some uh, rainbow for this one. All right. Sophia Coppola is here. Her 1999 feature film, The Virgin Suicides, established her without Bill Murray. No Bill Murray, no movie. That's true. I just didn't have any, I, yeah, I had to do it with him. I just knew he was the person.
perfect person for this. Why? Um, there's just no one like him. I mean, he's just Bill Murray. He's uh, the, this great combination of um, funny and sensitive and sincere. And I and I, I wanted to see him in this romantic part that I'd seen him have moments of in Groundhog Day and Rushmore, and um, wanted to do a film centering around him. And this says something about you. He, it was not an easy sale. In a great kind of notion, he said that you had to cast a long line, suggest... He's elusive. He's not one of those people that checks in with his agents every day. He has his whole, his life outside of his film business, his private life and family. And um, so he just doesn't stay in touch with all the business people. He's not looking life. for the next opportunity. He's no, living his life. Exactly. So, um, and it's, which is unusual in the film business when people are really... Just switch to another interview as well. In translation, please welcome Sofia Coppola, everyone. Make the movie with anyone but him. And, and, and now that it's finished, and, and it certainly has his signature on it, as, as well as your own, certainly, uh, do you think that there could have been anyone else possibly to have played that? No, I can't imagine anyone else. Yeah. Uh, and, and what about him uh, was interesting to you for this particular piece of work? I mean, super responding, definitely introverted. So, got that. Did you custom write it for him? Yeah, I definitely thought about him when I was writing it, so he was sort of my muse and inspired it. Yeah. And um, I just thought it'd be funny to see him in that situation in Japan. And, and there's no one that's um, as funny and also heartfelt and sincere yeah. at the same time. Well, it's a wonderful combination. Seems very controlled as well. So informative, responding control is kind of the direction I'm getting from Sofia Coppola, especially on both interviews. Is she an INFP? That'll be kind of interesting. Combination of uh, acting and material and uh, also the directing. And, and it comes to you... Uh, from your experience of being in Japan, is that right, more or less? Yeah, I spent a lot of time there after college um, over the years, and I always wanted to make a movie there. Mm -hmm. and, and, and were you, were you uh, overcome by that melancholia, sort of bittersweet uh, excitement and loneliness? Yeah, I spent a lot of time after college in there because I'm an SI user. That seems to be uh, conveyed in the film when you were there? Yeah, it's just so foreign being in a country where you can't read the signs and don't know how to go anywhere. and it, um... So foreign being in a country, you don't know how to read the signs. It's, it's, it's just a, it's a rough uh, experience, you know. Um, so I could argue SE with that statement, but I just want to keep going first. It's a good chance there's an ISFP. I'm actually put a point down for SE as well on that. Um, it's, a, it's, it's like nothing else I've ever yeah. experienced. Yeah. And then the jet lag messes with your head because you start contemplating your life in the middle of the night and yeah. all that. <laughs> Uh, and and, and uh, at, at what point in, in your life, uh, being in this uh, this this powerful uh, film family, you, your father certainly, uh, and you must have accompanied him to locations when he was making films. Did you travel with him when you were younger? Yeah, he always brought us on location. So um, I remember going to the Philippines for Apocalypse Now when I was four or five. And yeah, I always thought it was fun. Uh, uh, the Philippines and the Apocalypse. I always thought it was fun. More introverted sensing. Um, definitely F I T E. Now, from, from what I have read of it, was not a good time for many, many people involved in that project. Except for me. Yeah, mean. but you had a great time. Yeah, I was like five. I was in the helicopters, <laughs> in the jungle. I had a great time. And, and at what point did you think you wanted to do what your father did for a living? Um, you know, I didn't know. I went to art school, and I tried a lot of different things. And then um, I did a short film, and that's where I felt like it was something that I, mm -hmm. you know, I really enjoyed and all the things I was interested in. And uh, d did you at any point have long talks with your father, long creative talks, long uh, uh, informational talks, or just he, one day, this is what I'm going to do? You know, he always talked about it all. As, ever since I was a little kid, he would say, oh, you know, the, in the third act, you have to do the... He was always talking about screenwriting and filmmaking because right. he's so excited about it. And, and now he's that always you are, are a director and, and uh, an Academy Award sensing. nominated director and, and screenwriter, did, 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 did he come to Japan when you were shooting this film? Has he come to work with you on projects? Um, he didn't come to Japan, but he came and visited when I was doing my first film, Virgin Suicides. Mm -hmm. And um, I said, please don't come the first week so the crew wouldn't get distracted. But he came and he... Please he don't on the first week so the crew doesn't get distracted to that's expert and sensing that's also okay. outcome <laughs> <laughs> okay, Dad, but it, it, it's it's hard to imagine greater intimidation than directing your first film regardless irrespective of the lineage and then on top of that uh, francis ford coppola shows up and just kind of bullying his way around on the set i mean you, you, you must have been withering honestly wasn't it difficult well i just think if it was my dad i don't look at him and say like he made the godfather movies but i knew that the crew would you know be 
you know, impressed by him. So. Yeah, impressed or intimidated. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but he was he was well behaved. He just after saying that, he then he just sat and you know talked to the extras. And he just sat talking to the extras, expert sensing. This is my dad doing this, doing that, etc. So, and allowing uh, Francis uh, Ford Coppola on the uh, on the set. You know, okay, it's not exactly doing the right thing. That's kind of more of a pragmatic approach, honestly. Uh, and I'm waiting to hear some what if statements, but I'm just not hearing them. Yeah. I could I couldn't do that though, could I? I couldn't show up on one of your sets and talk to the extras. Uh, you're welcome to. Really? Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, and after he saw um, Lost in Translation, what what was his reactions? Any criticisms? Any? Uh... Oh, I, I showed him an early cut, right? And he was one of the first people I showed, and he he really loved it. And he said, you know, you've got something there, and I mm -hmm. felt relieved yeah. and. Um, so that was helpful. And I felt relieved. I showed him an early cut. Uh, I felt good about that. I'm concrete AF because of what is. And I just got to say, folks, this woman is an ISFP. Kind of seen dying FP. Pretty concrete. Pretty concrete all the way through. ISFP, ISFP, ISFP is kind of where I'm coming at it from this standpoint. So, which is pretty cool. Uh, you know, I think. Uh, some people said that Alfred Hitchcock may have actually been an ISFP as well with ENTJ subconscious. ENTJs and ISFPs make fantastic uh, directors, etc., uh, or writers. So definitely uh, in that. So yeah, yeah. She's past oriented because she has SI critic. You know that that she could be an she could be an ESFJ focused ISFP, right? Or, uh, you know, but although I maintain she's actually more ENTJ focused, but she also wants to like, you know, hey, dad, you know, think highly of me, you know, approve of what I'm doing, because she's kind of drawing her self-worth on that as well. But yeah, like, there hasn't been any what if abstract standpoints, because, well, what if this had happened? What if that would happen? She says, yeah, dad, you can't come on this thing right now, because what's going to happen is, you know, people are going to be uncomfortable. You know, uh, so you just got to wait a little bit. That's more of a concrete approach with extroverted sensing, trying to make sure that the comfort level of everyone on the set is under control. Whereas in, uh, throwing in that additional factor, you know, an INFP wouldn't necessarily be have a problem with that because of extroverted sensing trickster, right? That's more of an SE parent point of view. So, yeah. Yes, super chats are very closed. Very, very, very closed. My goodness. Um, so, okay, cool. And uh, that's it for this evening. Um, thank you folks for coming. Uh, thank you for putting up the fact that I'm having sound problems. Um, I spent a lot of time today with my wife trying to actually figure out how to get the studio figured out. And we came up with a plan. We just have to come up with the money to try to pay for what we need to do that. And then also I was talking to an audio engineer to get those things fixed. But um, um, season 19, episode 4 is available for Patreon Gold Tier, How to Cognitively Develop uh, ENTJs, also known as uh, How to Reach Integration or Enlightenment for ENTJs. That's available on Patreon Gold Tier. We have our new season, which is uh, the ESTJ, or uh, Eight Rules for Love. And folks, coming very soon, How to Social Engineer INFPs. I hope to have it out this week, provided I can get all my audio and sound crap fixed as soon as possible. And by the way, folks, if anyone here has any skills with audio and video involving uh, some of my equipment, I got a Yeti, I got a laptop, I got XSplit Broadcaster growing in, um, green screen, chroma key, etc. If anyone you guys got uh, experience with uh, managing that, so and preventing and creating a process and a procedure that I could follow every single time to make sure that uh, we don't have mishaps like we had tonight, I'd be very happy uh, to get that as well. So anyway... Thank you all for being a very merciful audience. I'm very grateful to all of you. And uh, we're going to be getting uh, more content out as uh, I continue to get things more streamlined. And uh, you should see these standard operating procedure documents I wrote to like help me like actually get through. It makes uh, the production process a lot faster, except for like when all of a sudden my audio video breaks. But, you know, it is what it is. Also, hashtag last word. Eric Strauss, a.k.a. Talking to Famous People, is an ESTP. If you don't know, watch the rewind of this live stream, and uh, you will see that he is not an ENTP. He is an ESTP. So if I said ENTP, Freudian slip, he's actually an ESTP. So anyway, folks, you all have a good night, and uh, thank you all for being here, and thank you for your support. Um, 
and uh, look forward to uh, how to social engineer INFPs dropping in the near future. See you later, folks.